So today we're looking at DJ Player version 5.0. There have been a couple of big changes in the background to the app, so let's take a look at those. Now immediately when you um, load your deck screen, if you're connected to a USB audio device, that device will be displayed at the top. As you can see, I'm connected to Newmark IDJ Pro which has two channels of audio at the moment. Hit tracks and then go to more over here. So with DJ Player 5.0 they've renamed the audio options at the top and the thing that will get most people excited if you're running iOS 6 is the option to route your audio via USB. Now that can either be to a USB audio sound card or it can be to your MIDI controller which may have audio out on it as well. In the example here I'm connected to the Newmark IDJ Pro and it shows up here I could send channels 1 and 2 to the USB. Now that means that my master signal will be output on the Newmark IDJ Pro and I would need to use the headphone jack of my iPad for queuing. Now, for products such as the Vestex VCI 400, that has more than two channels. I think it has four channels, so you'd have an extra grey button here. And you can um, use that to send your master signal and your cue signal, both in stereo. So what else do we have on DJ Player version 5? Well, the other big thing, and this is a really big thing, is that it allows you to map your MIDI controller exactly how you want to the DJ Player version 5 functionality. Now here you can see I've connected to the Newmark IDJ Pro. Now you could connect up to four different USB MIDI controllers to your iOS device. Now this is great because it means that you could use a, uh, a jog wheel type controller for um, your main deck um, transport control you could use a nice little pad controller like the Akai um, LPD-8 uh, controller for your loops or cue points and you could use something else as well. So that is a really flexible way of connecting a, a multitude of MIDI devices to your iOS device. So let's take a look. If you go to edit MIDI maps you can see I've started creating a few the IDJ to go one is pretty good because the IDJ to go is a budget controller, but through use of this, I've been able to uh, implement things like low pass, high pass filter, um, some rudimentary effect mappings as well. So it's it's been pretty good um, and bringing in bringing uh, cheaper, smaller controllers to life. So for this, let's have a look at the IDJ Pro mappings. So this first page is basically allowing you to set up a sequence of MIDI actions when you first connect your controller to your iOS device. So you could get it to light up some um, buttons or uh, do something as you, you, um, you connect it. So as you can see at the bottom of the screen the uh, MIDI monitor is sending all sorts of MIDI change things as I press buttons and that helps helps you to identify exactly what the controller is doing and then that will allow you to map those actions to given features of the DJ Player application. So let's take an example, let's take the play pause button. Okay, So if I press that it says right I'm going to learn what you're going to do on the controller. So basically I've pressed that, it's now listening for MIDI messages. So if I press the play pause button of the left deck, you will see some lines get written to the MIDI monitor. So I've done that, so I press OK. And that sets the MIDI functionality at the top, the MIDI um, transport messages. And you can go through all the track transport controls, the tempo controls, cues and loops. So there's a whole bunch of stuff and that's just for one deck. OK, 
Okay, so you'd have the same for deck B as well. Then with at the bottom, you can set a whole bunch of MIDI actions for your effect settings and also for the mixer as well. So look at that, that's pretty much all you would ever want to do. Um, the only things that are missing are things like track load, but um, that's probably not sent as a MIDI message. That's more app specific, I expect. Uh, but all in all, a very, very cool way to map your MIDI controller of choice to the DJ Player app. Now, typically, apps in uh, iOS tend to be managed by a development team who will choose to support a given controller or given hardware uh, manufacturer. So this really democratizes the whole process and allows you to choose whatever MIDI controller your budget can afford or whatever you would like to use and then use it directly with the app. So you're not forced to buy the latest MIDI controller, you're not even forced to buy the most expensive one. You can buy whatever you like and as long as it's USB um, compliant and has enough power then it will work. Now the other cool thing here is that you can share your maps to DJ Tech Tools and that's a, another neat way of getting a bit collaborative with your maps. You could upload a map with all the MIDI functionality. Someone else could take a look at it and actually go, well, hold on, it would be so much better if you could tweak this and, and make a change and it would be much more useful. So there you have it. That's DJ Player version 5 for iOS devices. Now this runs on not only iPad, um, all versions. It also runs on the smaller devices, iPod Touch, iPhone. Now obviously multi-root audio is only available on iOS 6, so those devices with iOS 6 you can start to do that multi-root audio. So there you go, DJ Player version 5 in the App Store with multi-root audio and MIDI mapping.